Today I wanted to discuss the flip side of my previous video on generosity and giving and instead move over to how important it is for us to also be open to receiving blessings in whatever form they may take and whether that's from other people or from God working through other people. It is so important for us to be able to embrace all the good that comes into our lives and we set up a lot of subconscious mostly, but we do set up many blocks to receiving because at the end of the day, like who doesn't want to get more stuff, <laughs> but we limit it for ourselves. And so I would like to do a deep dive on that today. Hello everyone. My name is Sama and welcome to Mediocre Guidance. I am sick. <laughs> uh, and actually that is what inspired me to make this video and I'll go into that in a second. But yes, I am a little nasally today. I am pretty congested. I don't like being sick. <laughs> I revert to an infantile state when I'm sick. I just want to be a big baby and I want to be held and cared for. I'm just a really bad role model on like how to keep going on when sick. <laughs> but because I love doing this and I love being here for you, <laughs> I showed up anyways. First, I want to discuss the Bible verse that is most often quoted when it comes to the balance between giving and receiving, and that is Acts 20.35. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So what we hear quoted most often is that it is better to give than to receive. But we must keep in mind the full context of this verse. Jesus was actually referring to how we must help those who are of lower status than us, like those who are quote unquote weak, right? Those who require our help, require upliftment, and they need a hand up. That is what it is referring to. So as not to kick someone while they're down, not to take advantage and to... Um, see what you can get from someone who is down on their luck. Sorry, my cat is going hella crazy. So as always, context is very important. And I don't actually think that Jesus meant that, like, you should not be open to receiving. So I truly don't believe that this verse is indicating that we should close off our hearts to receiving or that, you know, there shouldn't be a balance of receiving as well as giving. As I've mentioned many times, love is a very giving force. It likes to expand and God, which embodies perfect love, likes to give, right? And if you call that the universe or source or creator, the higher power <laughs> that created us and cares for us is a giving force. And that is why we are able to manifest and be such amazing creators in our lives. Okay, so why would anyone not want to receive, right? I mean, especially in today's day and age, any leg up is very helpful. We have so many blocks to receiving and a part of that is believing that receiving is somehow very selfish, very self-serving, is not something that God would want from a, like, a, a well-behaved, righteous child or whatever, uh, but that's just not true. It's not true. I mean, when we pray, anytime we pray or we, you know, really want the help of the universe, if we're not willing to accept that help, what's the point, right? Speaking of manifestation, you have to be willing to receive what you want, otherwise manifestation just doesn't work at all. If you were raised in any sort of religious environment, you may have been taught that it is better to give and, like, charitable acts are a main focus, well, they should be, <laughs> uh, in major religion. That may basically take away the spotlight from receiving, but it shouldn't diminish the importance of receiving blessings. Even if you weren't raised in a, with a religious background or you're new to spirituality or whatever, I want you to maybe question behavior that was modeled by your parents or your caretakers growing up. And I'm gonna give you an example. So, when I was young, and I mean young, like a toddler slash a young child, like around five years of age, I was often told by my caretakers that I was very needy and that I was very attention seeking. Now, I'm not mad about it. I actually do believe that my caretaker, my primary caretaker at that time, was incredibly burnt out, did not have the support they needed to be raising a very small child. I 100% believe it takes a village to raise children. And so um, they were feeling very isolated, very unsupported, and essentially just um, working to the bone. And, and 
when I think of those memories of my caretaker, I do understand that it wasn't coming from a place of malice. It was mostly just a place of sheer exhaustion. Whatever the circumstances that led to that comment, it still ingrained itself into my psyche. <laughs> it burnt it into my brain and um, I grew up very much not um, wanting to bother anyone when I needed attention. So to me, whenever I want attention, even now as a grown ass woman, <laughs> I still feel like really bad when I want to talk to someone or I want to engage with someone. I feel like I am being needy. Maybe I am being clingy. And you know what? Maybe I do need more attention than the average person. I mean, look at me right now. I'm literally on camera. <laughs> um, but I've really had to train myself that it's okay to seek attention, right? Seeking attention is a request for love and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And in fact, if I am the type of person who does like being in the spotlight, who does like being the center of attention, maybe that is who I was meant to be in this lifetime. Maybe I was meant to be in a place of receiving and garnering attention so that I can serve people, so that I can help people like you, right? I've really had to train myself <laughs> uh, to be okay receiving attention. That is one example, but of course, when we think of receiving, we often want to receive financial blessings, right? We want to be open to receiving more money. I think that's one of like the top three things, if not the number one thing that people want to manifest into their lives is, is more uh, prosperity and financial abundance. And so I also want you to consider that there may be blocks that have either come from childhood where um, poverty was equated with being good and righteous or else you were somehow made to believe that you are not worthy of being rich, that maybe rich people are snobs and don't use their money for the right reasons. And of course, we do see examples of that all the time in popular media. We see bad rich people who hoard and don't look out for the welfare of their workers or for those who are struggling in our economy right now. And yes, that is a thing, right? But because there's such a focus on those sorts of rich people, we assume that all rich people are bad and that money corrupts. So we may create a block for ourselves to think that I don't want to be a rich person because rich equals bad. Or you may also have just grown up believing that you don't deserve anything in general. Money, love, whatever, like good luck, you know, maybe you just don't deserve it or you need to earn it or you are carrying too much guilt and shame to be worthy of receiving financial blessings. And those are things that are just in our head. They're just scripts that are running in our brain and literally um, are not true at all. <laughs> uh, they have no, absolutely no saying on what you can actually potentially receive if you open yourself up to believing that you are worthy. If you think of reality as it is, we do of course think of money as like this finite resource, right? Yes, in terms of the dollar bills that are circulating out there, there is a limited amount, but if you are in the spiritual sphere and you do believe that you want more prosperity in your life, you have to realize that uh, God is God. Creator or universe is, will create it for you, okay? There's nothing to stop <laughs> such a powerful force to generate money for you in ways that are beyond your imagination. And, and it's not our job to figure out how that money is going to appear and where it's going to come from. If we believe in the power of God, then we also have to lean into the realization that God is God. He can do anything. Um, the universe can and will deliver your wishes to you as long as you are open to receiving. You can actually see some people who are chronically in poverty, no matter what happens to them. Um, you actually, there are many countless stories of people who win the lottery and then, you know, two years down the road, they're basically back to square one and where they started. And that truly has to do with our ability to feel worthy of having treasure and abundance in our lives. And so if you struggle to maybe hold on to your money or like me, you want attention or you want love and for some reason you're not able to hold on to it. So it comes into your life, but it feels like it just slips out of your fingers um, nearly as quickly, then perhaps there is a script running in your subconscious belief system that is blocking your ability to 
to hold on to your blessings. So what is the remedy to all of this? It's to love yourself, right? When you love yourself, you begin to realize that you are worthy and that you do deserve to have what your heart desires. And of course, if you're like some psychopathic megalomaniac that desires chaos and suffering, then <laughs> this video is not for you. But you know what I mean, right? Like when you are coming from a place of love for yourself and others, of course you deserve blessings for that. Why wouldn't God want to bless you? You are an amazing creation and you are his creation. Like any parent who loves their child, that parent will do anything for their child and, and wants to see their child happy. So you do have to foster that love for yourself and see yourself as that person that wants to be looked after, that is desirable, that wants to be cared for, that will basically reprogram <laughs> whatever blocks you have in your brain. So take the time to dismantle whether that's like some bad memory that comes up that makes you feel like, hey, you know, this moment in time made me feel small. It made me feel unworthy. It made me feel like I wasn't deserving. See if you have any of those. And if so, you know, I, I do this mental exercise where I will actually visualize myself going into a time machine. <laughs> and I know that sounds crazy, but go into an imaginary time machine. And I want you to pop out at that moment in time where you are going through a difficult period. And I want you to place your hand on little you's shoulder and say, hey, it's going to be okay. <laughs> we turn out okay. Even if, you know, you're still struggling right now in present day, just know that you have it within you and you're stronger than you know. And let your younger self know that. Let your younger self know how amazingly strong and resilient you are. Even now, right? If you are back in your body, if you're feeling grounded, give yourself credit for what an amazing being you are and everything you've contributed to uh, other people into uplifting and making other people happy. So of course you deserve to be rewarded because you absolutely do. <laughs> Before I end this video, I just want to spend the last few minutes thanking some very amazing, wonderful people who really stepped up this past week. Um, I was at a work conference for the last few days uh, where I got this cold and there were just some amazing people who were angels, I feel, that came into my life to show me that I do deserve to be loved and cared for. So I'm going to spend a few minutes going through just their first names. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not doxing anyone. And um, if you're just part of my larger audience that always watches, it's you can totally stick around to see examples of love in action <laughs> when I go through these names. But otherwise, you are free to go, but <laughs> class dismissed. Okay, number one, Ronin, thank you so much for really exemplifying what it means to be inclusive. You saw me standing around like a lost puppy dog that very first day and you invited me out to lunch with your group of um, like colleagues and, and friends and so I am so incredibly thankful to you for being the catalyst for me making so many friendships these last few days. Thank you, Ronin. You're such a sweetheart. Um, so sweet. <laughs> uh, Gwen, Thank you for so enthusiastically being supportive of my YouTube channel. Um, that was so kind of you to be so like exuberant about sharing uh, my work and I really appreciate that. This is what I love to do and so your support, like it touched me beyond words. Um, Bridget, same. You were so kind and you like really gassed me up <laughs> when you were, sorry, that's such like young person lingo. Um, how do you say gassed me up? Thank you very much for encouraging me and <laughs> for praising my work. I don't want to sound pompous, but thank you so much. And like Bridget, you're such a like strong woman. I just love how you're so, um, easily able to stand strong in your beliefs and your values and communicate that. Amazing. Uh, Robin, snack queen, and just like such a wonderful caretaker for me while I was dying. Um, thank you. You're so cute and hilarious. Like you're, um, you're actually pretty cool. <laughs> and despite how you may think you're weird, it's actually quite awesome. Uh, Angelina, what a sweetheart. Like literally my hero. She took care of me basically <laughs> in my darkest moments these last few days when I was dying in a ball. Thank you so much for everything you did for me and for also just showing me so much love and being such a like vibrantly positive person. You obviously light up any room you go into and you're such an amazing human being. So thank you. Thank you. Rose, Thank you for, you know, being so open and speaking with me and um, like 
sitting and discussing your experience with me. You are such an amazing mother. Like what you do is so incredibly noble and takes so much effort um, and so much sacrifice on your part. So like kudos to you and you're a sweetheart. Thank you for talking to me. Uh, Twyla, thank you for subscribing so enthusiastically to my channel. Very kind of you. <laughs> I hope you like my content. Um, and Hazel, same. Thank you for being such a, a beautiful, lovely face to see every day and for also being very supportive um, and for uh, like literally waiting with me <laughs> until I got a ride home from the airport. So thank you. These people are just like amazing women, all of them. And, you know, it. it's just simple actions that are necessary to show love in this world. That's all it takes is just being kind towards others and like these small moments really add up and you have no idea how much they can touch someone, right? So keep being you, keep shining your light and that is all. I will let you go now. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.